Hello, I want to show you some benefits of our software which combines ADEM 1 and 2 ME switches with HyperDeck Studio Decks and our DDTech solution for I.O. usage with 8 to 64 in and outputs. The inputs can be used, for example, for additional switches to trigger different actions and the outputs may be used, for example, for tele-signalization of your cameras. So let's have a look at the software control surface. You've got a status window, you've got a clips window in which you can organize the clips which are stored on your SSD media for the HyperDeck Studio decks. You can see um, the names and the in and out points can be simply read out. You don't have to put it in yourself. You can just read it out directly from the HyperDeck Studio decks and you can define different actions which happen on in and out point and um, when pressing start timer, play and stop on the window where you can make the transport or choose the clips to be played at next. You can have different windows, as many as you um, have um, HyperDeck Studio decks. And then you got our main window, the macro window. There you can define different actions which happen when different triggers are pressed. Triggers can be some inputs of our um, I.O. module or can be different sources on the ADEM1 and 2ME panel. Even you can use keys or transition effects as inputs. And then we got the macro group window. There you can switch macro groups on and off by mouse. These also can be activated by macros themselves. So let's have a look at different scenarios. Let's say you have a job and you have a stage and in the background of the stage there is a LED wall and the producer says he wants two streams, one for the LED wall in the back of the stage and one stream for the audience at home. Let's say you want to do this with um, your 2ME mixer. You have the first ME for the stream at home and the second ME for the LED wall. So normally both streams are um, the same, but when you switch to a um, camera which has a white angel, this camera will also see the LED wall in the back. And if you bring this to the LED wall, there will be a video feedback. So you don't want this, but you want all the other cameras, let's say camera one to camera three, a close up cameras, you want the same to happen on the ME2. So let's have a look at the window of the mixer so you can better see what we um, did program in this case. So again, camera one to camera three are close up cameras and we want to come up camera one to three to ME2. So if I'm switching the button camera two, you can see this happens in the ME2. If I'm switching camera three, this comes to camera three. But if I'm switching camera four, let's say this is our wide view, this is not happening to the second ME, so to the LED wall. So let's have a look how this is um, looking in our split screen. On the left downside, you got the output of ME1. So this is the home stream and the right downside is the LED stream. So if I'm switching to camera two, this will come to both home and LED stream. But if I'm switching to camera four, this is just happening to our program window on ME1, which is for the audience at home. The LED wall on the right downside is, is um, the same source as it was before switching to camera four. So you can see on the LED wall, it is um, the camera which was switched before switching to camera four. If you have a mixer with only one ME, you can also realize the thing with the LED wall stream and the stream for the home audience. You just have to define, let's say, auxiliary one as your LED uh, wall. And then you can say camera one to camera three shall be switched on auxiliary one simultan. And um, if you press camera four, this should not happen to auxiliary one. What you can also do is define another source instead of the camera four 
in ME2 to be switched when pressing camera 4 in the ME1. So, let's say you want to play a loop or a logo on the LED wall every time you switch to a camera with a white angel. This is also no problem to be programmed. Now I want to show you how to program a macro. In this case I want to show you how to bring camera 1 up to ME2 if it's switched on ME1. So I call this macro cam1 pgm to ME2. Uh, I am defining the group always active, which means every time the engine is started, this macro will be active. I could also decheck this activation to deactivate this macro. I could also define the group make maybe dimmer active and this macro only would work if dimmer active would be activated. So I can have some macros which are in the group and I can deactivate or activate this. But in this case I say always active, though it's always active no matter what is pressed in the macro group window. I'm saving this macro and I define a new line. In this case I want a wait to event to be the trigger. I can select this by right click into this um, field. And then I want um, the ADEM switcher ME1 source cam1 if it's on PGM full to be the trigger. PGM full means, let me show you here, if the camera 1 is on ME1 directly brought to program, this is the trigger. I also could say PGM fade, that means, let's say you have in the program cam 5, you got camera 1 in the preview and if you now um, move the T-bar, this cam 1 in the preview is the trigger. It's, it's now red and this means that's the trigger. I also could say preview, so if I put cam 1 in the preview, this is the trigger. But in this case I want PGM full to be the trigger. I say OK, now the program says OK, um, there's uh, already an existing event with exactly this parameters I just defined and it's called ADEM M1 cam1 PGM full. That's great. Um, so I could have selected this um, special definition by the event which was um, predefined. So if I'm, whenever I define a new event, this is saved on a name and I can later to um, get it quicker, I can select it right here. But in this case, that's okay. So I save this line and I want um, something to happen if the trigger is pressed. I want to happen on ADEM ME2 camera 1. I save this line, I'm starting the engine and now you can see what happens. If I'm pressing camera 1, this will also come up on ME2. But I also could say if the camera 1 is pressed on ME1, the program should wait 2 seconds. Let's bring in this wait milliseconds event, 2000 milliseconds, bring this up before and then I want not camera 1 to come, but I want my Hyperdeck Studio, where I got a loop for the LED wall, to come up to ME2. So that's it, I'm starting the engine to show you what happens. First I have to go in another input, now I press cam 1, the program will wait 2 seconds and you see the Hyperdeck Studio with my loop comes up 2 seconds later. Let's say you want to use Tele for your cameras. You can buy the Tele box from um, Blackmagic, but this will only reflect what is switched on ME1. ME2 will not be switched and this is not very good if you have the case I just described. So in this case you have camera 4 on air and camera 1 on air for the LED wall. So you want both cameras to have LED light and this can be realized with our software easily. Then you can um, define the outputs of our DDTEC solution with A264 outputs and inputs. And you can use the outputs for telesignalization and say, um, give me reflection of telelight for ME2 and ME1. Another special case is um, if you uh, um, want to produce sports events and um, you have slow motion operator and let's say you have two slow-mo channels which can be played back. Normally you would be in a live camera 
and then you would, um, if you want to use Stinger effects, have to select the first slow motion channel in the preview. Then you have to select Stinger effect in your transition, um, choose control, and then you will have to press auto and this will come to your first slow motion. Now you have to select the second slow motion channel in preview, have to select mix as transition effect so you can blend over to the other channel. And if you want to come back to a live source, you will have to preview the live source, switch again back to Stinger effect and press auto. So this is very difficult when you're under pressure. We defined this in three single macros, which can be triggered by three switches, which are connected with our I.O. solution. And this is called slow-mo one, slow-mo two and slow-mo end. So what happens? When I'm in the live uh, camera, which I am now, I just have to press slow-mo one. The stinger effect is triggered. Then it's switched to the slow motion channel one. Now let's say you want to come to slow motion channel two. There needs to be a fade. You just press slow motion two. The fade comes over. Let's say you have again slow mo one. You have to push slow mo one. It comes over to slow mo one. And now you want to come back to the camera, um, to the live camera you had switched before switching to the slow motion. You just press slow end. Stinger effect will come in and you will come back to your live camera. While playing the slow motion, you also um, can select another source to come back after the slow motion. This is not a problem at all. Let's have again a look at the control software surface, especially at the clips section. There you can easily manage clips which are stored on your solid state drive of your Hyperdeck Studio by clicking Clips Auslesen. Then you get your clips and you get the names of the clips, you get in and out point and you can define different actions which shall happen on different cases. Normally when you want to play a clip you would have to switch to the source your hyperdeck is plugged in. You would have to press play and after the clip is finished you would have to switch to another source. We have programmed it uh, in our software, so you don't have to do all this. You just have to press one single button. The clip will automatically be played and come on air. And after it's, it's finished, it will automatically switch back to the source that is in the preview. Um, maybe you would like to um, have another source to be selected while the clip is um, being played to come back after the clip has finished. So I will show you um, the case where we have the trigger uh, on a button which is connected with our I.O. interface with A264 in and outputs. You also could use as a trigger uh, another button, maybe the button uh, which brings the hyperdeck to the air and then it will be played automatically. Or you can do it via our software with the button start timer. So I have queued um, this clip which um, can be played by pressing this. I will show you this will be played and this comes automatically to air and after it is finished it will switch back to me automatically. I will not have to do anything. You have uh, seen this is working automatically and after the clip is finished uh, we have defined the action that the clip one should again be queued after this is finished. So if I'm pressing again, it will come again and again. Um, I also could program that the second clip will be queued and played when pressing play the clip and so on and so on. You can do your own playlist and you just have to press play and it will come back after the clip and you press again play for the next clip and so on and so on. And you have just to press one single button to do um, the playing, the switching to the source hyperdeck and coming back to another source.